Welcome as we look at Revelation chapter 7 today. Now in the past chapter, Revelation 6, we saw the uh, unfolding of various destructions uh, through the six seals that were broken. The seals are actually messages that were given to the church that we may be prepared to face these struggles during the church age. As we look further into the book of Revelation, I want to give you a simple clue uh, that will unravel the mystery about all the theology that floats around regarding the book of Revelation, which sometimes can be quite daunting and it can even keep you away from reading the book. So let me give you this simple uh, clue. And uh, if you just keep that in mind, it will take away the mystery that surrounds all the teachings that are given about the book of Revelation. You'll have to follow it very carefully. The book of Revelation can be divided into three broad sections. Chapter, chapters 1 to 3, which actually gives us a description of the seven churches of uh, Revelation that were present in what is today known as modern Turkey. Uh, and these letters were directed towards them because they they were facing the brunt of uh, Domitian's rule. Then the next section is chapters 4 to 19. And this is the body of material that can be quite complex for people to understand. The third section is chapters 20 to 22. Chapters 20 to 22, for the most part, relate to the future as far as our life in eternity is concerned. So chapters 1 to 3 is about the past. It was written to those seven churches with applications for the church throughout the age. And then chapters 4 to 19 is the issue. So let me explain it to you. The different perspectives that uh, scholars take. Some are of the opinion that chapters 4 to 19 speak entirely about the great tribulation period which they state is going to last for a period of seven years. That is not upon us now. It is entirely in the future. So those who believe that Revelation chapter 4 to 19 apply to the great tribulation actually find not much meaning in what it reveals there for this time. There is one perspective and there are many credible scholars who hold to that position and there is obviously sufficient evidence from the scriptures to come to that conclusion. The second alternative approach is the position that chapters 4 to 19 speak about the complete church age. That is the period from the first coming of Christ to the second coming of Christ. And so all the complex symbols that are there in chapters 4 to 19 actually portray the struggles, difficulties, and the victories that the church will face during the church age. That is a position 
I am coming from. And from that position, we want to glean from the symbolic texts what God is saying about the happenings in the world as well as his revelation about his strength and power for daily living. So if you understand those two perspectives, actually the mystery about the book of Revelation is lifted to a great degree and all that remains is to understand what the symbols mean. And we're going to cut through a lot of stuff and just try to find out what the book of Revelation says to us devotionally in terms of our walk with God. And you can never lose by understanding that. So whatever position a person holds, whether he believes that chapters 4 to 19 apply completely to a future state called the Great Tribulation, or whether you hold the position that it is a description of the events that will take place during the church age, you are going to benefit when you uh, approach the scripture trying to glean what God wants to say to our relationship with him. The other factor that we must understand is that the book of Revelation cannot be interpreted literally. From Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 itself we learn without getting into too many technicalities, uh, it is quite evident that the mode of interpretation of the book of Revelation has to be the symbolic approach. In other words, all those pictures that obviously cannot be taken literally have symbolic meaning. And so unraveling the meaning of those symbols is the issue. And how do we unravel the meanings of those symbols? By going back into the word of God because the scriptures interpret themselves. Now, if you understand this simple delineation that I've given you, then you will be able to grasp the spiritual meaning of the book of Revelation for your day-to-day -day life. And remember, these are devotionals. This is not a complex Bible study. There is, place, uh, there is a place for that, but in these few minutes, we cannot do that. So today I want to focus on Revelation chapter 7. And Revelation chapter 7, the first part, uh, shows us a picture of uh, 144,000 people. And they're all listed by the names of the tribes of 12 tribes of Israel. And what we read is that the, there were four angels who were at the four corners of the earth and uh, uh, symbolically portrays that there were destructions and, and uh, uh, various uh, terrible incidents that were going to take place, which of course we saw in the first six seals. The seventh seal has not yet been broken. So this is an interlude. This is something God wants to say to us after he has revealed that the church age is going to face all these difficulties. And then another angel comes on the scene and he says, hold on, don't wreak destruction and havoc on the world until the seal of God is placed on all his servants. And who are these servants? The 144,000. Now, the identity of the 144,000 uh, has been written about by many different uh, writers and have been given different interpretations. But for our perspective, we hold to the position that the 144,000 symbolically portray the people of God during the church age, although terminology regarding the Jews is used there. That is one little question. The first tribe that is named there is the tribe of Judah. Judah was not the oldest of the sons of Jacob. Reuben was. But first, the tribe of Judah is mentioned, indicating possibly that this is not speaking about a literal 144,000 people 
of uh, uh, Israelite origin, but it is a symbol of the people of God. And why 144,000? 12 tribes or 12 patriarchs of Israel and the 12 apostles of the Lamb, 12 into 12, 144 into 1,000, which is a total figure, may be symbolically referring to the people of God. And the wonderful truth that we learn from the first seven or eight verses of Revelation 7 is this, that God has sealed his servants. We are called his servants or his slaves. As his people, while it is true, the six seals were broken and messages were given about what is going to happen on the earth. God has a seal on the forehead of all his people. Psalm 4 and verse 3 says, God has set apart the godly for himself. And he will hear when we cry to him. So the message of Revelation 7, 1 to 8 is simply this. There is trouble, difficulty, persecution in this world. But fear not. Because God has identified his own. And put his seal of ownership and protection on those who belong to him. And no matter what we may go through, God's protective hand is upon his people. But there is a condition. He has called us to be his servants. So wherever you are, whatever position you may hold, whatever profession you may follow, whatever business you may run, uh, you may be a minister of the gospel, or you may be a lay worker, or you may be uh, doing some ministry in some corner of the world. Wherever you are, remember, there is one appellation that the Lord gives to you. You are a servant of his. And that's what he calls you. And if you're a servant of his, then be true and faithful and serve him in everything you do, in your vocation, in your job. It's a service to the Lord. Do it as unto him and be sure that you are faithful and true to him. And one magnificent assurance is given to you. And that is this, that no matter whether the winds may blow and the trees may fall and there be turbulence in the sea of humanity. God's eyes are upon you because his seal on you identifies you as somebody belonging to the Lord. And so we abide in him and through his protection, we go through the journey of life. This is a wonderful promise given in Revelation chapter 7, 1 to 8. And I hope that as you reflect on these verses, I hope you will read them yourself personally. And as you reflect on it, be strengthened by the knowledge and the assurance that God's presence is with you wherever you are. May your light shine for him in this dark and crooked and perverse generation. Father, we just thank you once again for the glorious promises of your word. You are our strong tower our refuge, our protection. And thank you, Lord, that your seal is on our foreheads and that mark of ownership distinguishes us. Help us to live according to that distinctive mark that you have placed upon us and be true and faithful to you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, be with you, fill you with his Holy Spirit and help you to walk with him. Thank you.